Okay, thank you very much for uh, for being here and uh, listening to me. So yeah, I'm uh, Sander Kaunhof. I'm the CTO for uh, NLZ. And I've actually been involved with uh, NLZ right from its uh, inception in uh, 2013. Uh, like Eric just said, uh, my background is uh, being a developer, so I was uh, the technical lead uh, at the time that NLC was being built. And that gives me the unique position of having uh, user ID number one in our database. So that's something I'm still very, very proud of. So yeah, I'm going to talk about why we exist, challenges and successes of being born in a broadcaster consortium. So I think if you look back at uh, um, Jacob's uh, presentation just now, um, in the Netherlands, I think the, the broadcasters took a different approach. So for his perspective was from a traditional uh, service provider, um, we are tackling the uh, decline in linear television from a broadcaster's uh, perspective, uh, where they saw the need for an, uh, an OTT platform. So uh, let me tell you a little bit uh, about that. Um, yeah, so I'm going to give a brief overview in history of, uh, of NLZ. Talk a little bit about our pivotal moment in our in our uh, young existence. Then I'm going to go on and on about how great and perfect and how good we are. So I'm sorry for that in advance. Uh, and then, yeah, well, honesty, right? So uh, I'm also going to talk a little bit about the challenges that we face because not all is perfect, as you will hopefully have learned at the end of this uh, presentation. So what is uh, NLZ? We are a direct-to-consumer subscription-based OTT streaming service. Uh, so you could say one of the many, but I think the unique situation in our case is that we are not like Netflix, like, like Prime coming from some American uh, big corporation. We are founded by the three biggest Dutch local um, broadcasters. So that's the, uh, the MPO, so the Dutch NRK, RTL from the Bertelsmann Group and Talpa. Talpa was founded by Sean de Mol, uh, who people might know as the inventor of the voice and Big Brother and that kind of uh, quality television. Um, yeah, so uh, we were launched in uh, 2014 and uh, we were just one of the initiatives uh, in Europe. So uh, we were well before BritBox uh, in uh, England, of course, Salto in France and joined in Germany. So yeah, we were earlier than, than those. So yes. Um, what I left out of this slide on purpose is that our Belgian friends, they were actually a couple of months earlier than when I was with, uh, with Stevie. So, uh, but, but just forget about that. Um, yeah. So how does it work uh, for NLC? So uh, what is our organizational structure? So we're not like a traditional company with, uh, with shareholders. We're more like a, a club, you could say with, uh, with three members, uh, being the MPO, RTL and Talpa. Um, and the way we work in terms of uh, revenue sharing is not that uh, we take the profits and um, the amount of investment that you do that will guarantee some sort of return on our revenues. The way we provide uh, back our revenues to the broadcasters is in terms of what share of the content being watched did they provide. So if I, if I have like two shows on NLZ, but they account for 50% of all viewing hours, um, my company would get like 50% of the revenues, even though maybe I only provide a fraction of the, of the content in the whole catalog. Um, and of course, another important thing that we deliver back to these users is data. I mean, it's 2023, data is of utmost importance. So we really make sure that they remain the owners uh, and receivers of their data, but only the data about the viewers who are watching their content both linearly and also as a VOD service. So that's uh, basically our work. It's a different structure, I think, and uh, it has uh, some of its uh, unique challenges. But one great thing is that we are uh, an open corporation. So actually there is room for other partners to, to join us, uh, which makes it uh, interesting, uh, I think. So a uh, little bit of history. So let me tell you about the early days. As you can see, um, I did not pick this DVD like uh, a random uh, DVD. Uh, the title says it all, I think. Um, yeah. Um, when we launched, we were just having an asphalt uh, service. And uh, so you could watch like content on demand on our platform. We did not have any linear television at all. And what made things worse is that uh, all the content that we provided was actually freely available in an AVOD format by one of the broadcasters on their own website. So users were just paying for not having ads. And at eight uh, euros a month, 
uh, well, Dutch people found that to be quite steep. So I remember I was the, the, um, uh, the technical lead. And before we launched, I had to do all kinds of load tests, like with hundreds, 200, 300,000 users concurrently. Well, let me tell you, there was some wasted efforts there. I mean, uh, I was happy if I had one little small server, like maybe working a little bit for all the, for all the customers that we had. Um, another reason that I've put a DVD in this picture is that we were actually at that time so small that some people joked, it's actually much more cost effective to just send the people a DVD if they want to watch content on NLC because, uh, let's get this whole thing uh, over with. So yeah, early days, luckily things are different now. Um, yeah, so we launched in 2014, like I said, under great, great success. Um, but then in 2017, our uh, current and then uh, director said, yeah, actually it's, it's strange, right? We have, um, you can watch uh, shows on NLZ before they're being shown. Uh, sometimes in, in case some content, almost always after they're being shown, but generally not when they're being shown. And for a lot of content that really doesn't make sense, right? Uh, we, we've talked about sports a lot here today. Uh, nobody's going to watch, well, you can't support, watch sports in advance. That would be a great uh, USP if we could, but okay. Uh, but nobody's going to watch sports that much afterwards, right? You want to be in the moment and you want to be there, right? When, when it's happening. So that, uh, uh, that was really a miss. And also the, the news, people are not going to watch the news a little bit later. You want to have a lot of people are like eight o'clock news time. I want to watch it now, not like 10, 15 minutes later. So when we added that, um, we really created a big growth in our uh, subscriber numbers. Um, gotta be honest, the pandemic did help us as well uh, a little bit. I mean, uh, yeah, staying at home, uh, I mean, subscription services all uh, took off uh, during that time. Um, but I'm actually really proud to say that we have uh, grown to over 200,000 uh, users. This is our current number, not just the forecast for this year. So I'm actually pretty proud and happy with, uh, with those numbers. In, um, uh, in also the relatively small market, I think that's something uh, the Netherlands share with uh, with the Nordics. Um, yeah, so uh, and that's also include a, a price hike, which we were not too happy about uh, having to to put forward, but the broadcasters insisted. I don't know why. Um, yeah, so that's our current situation, which is a lot better than the than the early days where we were really not having any customers at all. So this is what the product looked like now. Um, our tagline is the smartest way uh, to watch television because we really saw this addition of asphalt combined with linear television uh, is, a, is a great product. So if you use our product, you can watch the television uh, linearly, but then if you watch a show, you can um, uh, watch it ad free as well. So if you go to the TV guide, in a lot of cases, you can say, oh, this show is on tonight, but wait, I can watch the whole season already. So uh, by combining all these things together, uh, that really helps us to provide a new way of watching television um, that is an added bonus upon the, the normal advantages, of course, of OTT uh, linear watching where you can bring it on your device everywhere, etc. Yeah, so as you can see, we're all uh, on all major devices in, uh, in the Netherlands. So uh, uh, web, uh, TVOS, Android TV, Fire TV, Samsung, LG, all that, uh, that yeah. So... Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's our product right now. And we offer this uh, currently in, in two, uh, two packages. So you get uh, $8.95 a month. I'm afraid there's not too many customers here for the, for the Dutch content, but if you're interested, try right, to uh, talk to me later. Um, but we, uh, we offer a, a, a two a week uh, free trial and then uh, for nine uh, euros a month, you can use uh, NLZ. And uh, beginning of this year, we added the extra package where uh, we have 10 more channels, mainly uh, British channels, um, where, uh, and, and that's doing actually pretty great. So there's a lot of people who are missing the BBC in, in our content offering, and uh, they wanted to add that uh, in as well. Um, and you can get a monthly subscription, which is by far the most popular still, but also if you uh, commit for a whole year, you get a, get a discount. So uh, that's uh, our way of uh, uh, rewarding loyalty. So, like I said, we're the biggest and the best. Well, after Netflix, Feed It On, Disney, and still Fireplay, but who's counting, right? So, uh, but if you look at our numbers, there's some that are actually quite proud of. It, I, it might be a little bit hard to read, but we are like the light bluish one, the, the small sliver. Uh, 
but but still, right? We're bigger than uh, Amazon. Uh, this is in uh, so it's a Dutch uh, title, but it's in millions of visitors uh, on a monthly uh, monthly basis to the to the app. Uh, and we're bigger, much bigger than Sky Showtime. And I'm predicting, and might be wishful thinking, that we will overtake Fireplay in the in the coming uh, year as well. Um, so yeah, not the, not the biggest one, as you can see in the Dutch market. We have Netflix, uh, then Vireland, which interestingly is by RTL, one of our founders. Uh, I'll more on that later, and then uh, then Disney and Fireplay. So that's a little bit uh, the Dutch landscape and our position uh, in there. Um, so we're really happy with our users and uh, our users are really happy with us. At least that's what they're telling me. So as you can see, we have an MPS that's steady at 66, which is, uh, I think, a pretty good score. We, we really have some fans. I remember one time coming into the office and somebody asking me for merchandise because they liked products so much. And it's, that's really a great thing to, to have happen to you at your workplace. Um, so engagement is really high at, uh, and, and climbing a lot. So. Uh, the average NLZ user is uh, doing 81 minutes a day on uh, on our platform. We just hope that's not too much due to account sharing, but that's a, that's a whole different story. Um, and also we have a lot of weekly active users and these are also still growing at, uh, at 74% uh, of uh, weekly active users. So users watching at least one video. Um, and then this graph I've added to show that our proposition is really uh, the users are using our product in the way that we envision and wanted them to use it. Um, because we have, um, if you look at this graph, you see the big uh, purple, uh, pink uh, pink block is the usage of thought, which is roughly half of the usage. And then the, the other three below are the more linear uh, ways of watching video, meaning that people do use it linearly and they find their way into our asphalt edit, uh, edit services in there as well. So. Um, it's always great when the data corroborates your theory about uh, how the product should uh, should work. So, um, yeah, we do this all with a very, very small team. We're actually a really small company. We had a company outing last and we were able to fix the whole company into two rowboats. One would be too much of a, a security risk for the company, of course. You know, you never know what happens when one sinks. Um, so I'm not going to run through all, uh, all this, but the main point is that we are less than 30 FTE even including uh, external hires uh, for, uh, for mainly development. Um, and one thing I want to highlight on this slide is the customer service. So there's nothing too much to do with the strategic story I'm telling you, but if again, get, give people one advice, is make sure you insource your customer service and you put them as close as possible to, to the developers. And, and also uh, with me as a CTO. So I really encourage them to, when they have a reoccurring problem or something they don't find to, to just run up to us. And that means we have a very, very short cycle between uh, a customer complaint and a, and a fix. So it's not like it has to be aggregated in some sort of uh, data center or somewhere where there's um, uh, hired help when, when we've one of, uh, out of a hundred people are just trained on answering the phone saying, hi, this is NLZ, right? So um, yeah, if I can give one advice uh, around organization is well, keep it small, but also keep your customer service really close. Uh, they're really important to uh, to your business. So how do we do so much with uh, with so little uh, people? Um, that's because we have uh, a laser focus on connectivity. And also it's not in the slide, we hate meetings, but that's, uh, that's a different thing. Um, so everything must be pluggable. That means if we, uh, we're always looking for best of breed solutions out there in the, in the market. Um, but we also make sure that when we integrate them into our landscape, that they're like Legos, right? They should be like the Lego blocks. If it's too com it's if it's more complicated than adding just a Lego block, we're like, mm, we maybe we need to redesign here a little bit. And that also, even though we're small, we don't have a lot of uh, development capacity. We are able to um, run into uh, a lot of uh, alpha and beta projects with uh, with suppliers. So there's three I just want to mention briefly here. So uh, Confifa, where we're doing great things. I think we were like the first, maybe the second. Um, uh, platform of using their new application insights uh, module, uh, which is now replace, replacing Google Analytics in our in our app, and it's been really great of being um, working so closely together with them. So we could really have a lot of influence on the development program there. Uh, Media Distillery, where they, uh, which 2023, I have to mention AI. So they're doing AI for us, where they uh, look at our um, content, like our news shows, and they chapterize this for uh, fully automatic. 
And they also provide a small synopsis and distilled topics from there for search uh, engine integration, um, which is a really great feature that, that really works well. And we were the first of implementing that, which is really nice. And uh, lastly, Atem, where we're working with our new Atem uh, Live Plus, which is encoder, transcoder, et cetera, in the cloud, which we uh, plan to uh, leverage for uh, disaster recovery in case of we have an outage of our, uh, of our system. So we can quickly switch over to uh, a whole different uh, uh, provider for our live uh, OTT services. So yeah, hopefully I've told you now uh, how great uh, we are, but as the saying goes, so I think every silver lining has a cloud. Um, and the cloud, I mean, the thing that's blocking the sun, you know, and in this context, cloud is different uh, meaning. But uh, yeah, let me go into some of the challenges that we face. Uh, we face a lot of challenges like, uh, like many of your, you do, but I want to focus specifically on the challenges we face being part of this consortium with uh, public and private uh, broadcasters uh, working together. So firstly, let's look at the very competitive Dutch landscape. I don't think the Netherlands are unique in this, but um, uh, still it's, uh, uh, it provides some special challenges for us. So if you look at this landscape, on the one hand, you have like the Zico and the KPN, which are like the, the cable uh, providers, the more traditional uh, suppliers of linear television. Um, and then of course you have the uh, OTT services and the asphalt services, uh, many of whom are actually driving our, um, uh, our, our complementary to, to what we offer. So we see when with each introduction of a new asphalt um, service, we see a lot of people uh, giving up their traditional cable um, subscription and then they keep missing something. So they end up with us for their linear television needs. So that's great. However, we also have like this, this V over here, which is uh, the second largest uh, uh, asphalt service in the Netherlands, but it's also owned by RTL. So as you can imagine, there's content continuously uh, some friction about what content will they place on Videoland and what content will they uh, play out with, uh, with us and on, on linear television. And that's sometimes a really difficult position to be in where they do things like, and, and which is within the right where, where they put the preview window a little bit earlier on video launch. So if you want to watch the latest Paradise Island, yeah, you can watch it like four hours early on video launch and people learn these things. And those things are really annoying when you have to compete with your own, uh, with your own uh, founding father. So that, that's quite complicated. Kijk uh, from Talpa, they have uh, uh, recently started selling content directly to uh, Prime. So after, uh, after the replay window of seven days, it's not available with us, but with, uh, with Prime. So these are very um, complicated things you have to explain to our users, like why do I need to watch, uh, watch this show on Prime and not with you? Another thing that's really uh, difficult in this, uh, in this setup is, uh, is the, golden, uh, the goose with the golden egg. And that's about cord cutting as two sides. So it's all great for, for us OTTers here, but uh, remember for our broadcaster, I don't know if that's the case in the Nordics as well, but the cable companies, they provide a lot of money to the, um, to the broadcasters for the right to distribute their content. Uh, which means that even though we can be really aggressive and push uh, cable cutting, that means that uh, on the one hand, we're cannibalizing on the income from uh, on the revenue stream from our, uh, from our broadcaster. Um, and sometimes that makes it really difficult. So we used to have, for instance, we used to have a, a television commercial where we yanked out cables out of a wall and uh, we're, we're pushing people away. Um, yeah, that didn't go over too well, actually. So uh, <laughs> um, th th these kinds of things are, are, are really tricky. Um, and it also has to do with the long term versus short term. So short term, it does really make sense for the cable companies, right? To, to, for the broadcasters to make sure they, they keep this revenue as big as possible coming from the, from the cable companies. But long-term, we all know uh, linear television is in decline and there will become a fulcrum point at which the cable companies will say, yeah, well, your, your, mar your, your proportion to the market is so small, we're no longer going to pay, gonna pay for, uh, for the distribution rights. Maybe you should pay us. And, and at that time, you want to have um, NLZ as your parachute as big as possible. So it's always this, this battle between long-term and short-term. And believe me, this, uh, a lot of this discussion is continuously going on within, uh, within the boardroom. Um, but well, it keeps things interesting. So yeah, then I talked a lot about, mainly about being in partner with the private um, uh, broadcasting corporations. 
But uh, I just want to also uh, tell you some challenges about working with a public broadcast uh, corporation, which is really different. They're really good about providing us the, uh, the content, but also not being a, um, a private uh, corporation, but, a, but one with a public mission. They look at content really differently. Like the, the private broadcasters, they say, here's our content. You push it, use data, use personalization, throw it all together. Just give them uh, the most po uh, popular stuff and, and we trust you. Make sure we get enough eyeballs. For the public, it's different because they sometimes they have content that is not necessarily the most popular content, but it's still content that they like to have pushed and, and presented. Um, and for us, that sometimes makes us uh, have to move in, in really difficult uh, forms. So uh, I, I, I here have the UI uh, thing. Uh, this is something I really, really like. It's an abomination. We have these buttons here where we can go to each of the uh, suppliers. This is for the regional uh, small uh, um, uh, broadcasters, which you also supply. But uh, so the MPO, the public broadcaster, they have their own environment in which they can uh, make the make the rows. But as you see, this is our this is the top. So this is this is our fold in our app. So it's taking up a real big part of very essential real estate. So uh, our UX UI guys and me also are really not happy about this button. But so actually, I hacked our own app. So if I open my app, I don't have these buttons anymore. So that's uh, that's one of the privileges of working uh, for a company. Um, and we also have things like um, uh, our recommendation row. So if you look. Ambufola means recommended, um, recommended by the MPO and, and all other recommendations, right? No user wants this. There's no user who says, I'm going to open the NLZ app to watch an MPO content, right? They say, I'm going to open the NLZ app to watch some content. Why do we have, have these different rows? Besides the story I'm telling here, we don't have a good explanation why we have a separate rows for MPO movies. And it goes on and on throughout our app. So it's really, um, yeah, one of the difficulties. Uh, that we have to deal with also with working with a public uh, broadcaster. Uh, so uh, give me, uh, I hope you understand me that uh, um, relationships are pretty good but between us, but still there's, uh, there's a lot of challenges. Um, yeah, in, uh, in summary, a public-private consortium can work and well, be, be reasonably successful like I think we are. It's still, it's very difficult to keep aligning the different strategic common goals uh, and that's, you, you need, need, really need to have good people for that. So, uh, my, my boss Niels is really good in this. Uh, he's very patient, which is the number one, uh, requirement you, you, I think you need for this role. Um, and like, yeah, like I've hopefully uh, demonstrated and shown, we are fantastic. So if you have one point from this presentation, NLC, it's fantastic. Um, but we're not there yet. So, um. Uh, we're now in one of uh, 40, uh, every 40 households in the Netherlands. I think we have a lot more potential and become the way for Dutch people to watch uh, linear television in the future. So we have an uh, exciting and hopefully bright future ahead. And uh, well, thank you for uh, listening to me uh, going on and on about the company I so dearly love. So um, thank you very much.